Hi, I'm Derek Melber, Technical Evangelist for the AD Solutions team here at Manage Engine. I want to talk to you a little bit about groups within Active Directory. Even though Active Directory has been around for a really long time, there still seems to be a little confusion about groups. So I want to talk to you about how to correctly use groups to make sure that you can manage groups and users correctly and efficiently as well as easily troubleshoot the groups in a pinch if you're having trouble gaining access, a user's gaining access, or someone has too much access. Also, if we use the correct group membership and the correct group use, it's going to be easier to give information to our auditors, whether those be internal or external auditors, so they know who has access to what information. Now, within Active Directory, we have a couple of different types of groups. The group that I want to focus on is called the global group. The global group is global to the enterprise. The idea of a global group is that this group can be seen from all the domains within the forest. Now, these types of groups are excellent for putting users in them, and we want to name the group based on who is in that group. So for example, let's say that we have a group called HR. The HR group is gonna contain all of the HR employees. So we add the users to the group. Now with regard to groups, groups have members of users. So users can belong to multiple groups. These are totally different than organizational units. Organizational units are how we organize users and groups within Active Directory, and a user can only belong to one OU at a time. So groups are very important, and really the whole point of a group is to give access to a resource, or give privileged access. So groups are designed to give access to data and give users privileged access. For example, with privileged access, if I add someone to the domain admins group, it's going to give them the ability to administer the domain. So the global group is the primary type of group that we have within Active Directory, and we typically name these groups based on who is in the group. Now is when the confusion really starts. Within Active Directory, we can have additional global groups that we nest global groups in. So we can put a global group in another global group. Why would we want to do this? Well, let's say we might have a managers group. Well, we have HR managers, we have finance managers, we have engineering managers, we have all different types of managers. So we can put all the managers from the departments in a global group and then add those global groups to a central global group called managers. That would be an idea of group nesting. But what about access to the resource? Well, if we kind of go back in time, the historical way of adding a user to a resource was to create a local group on the server where the data resides. We typically would name this group based on the type of access they would have to the resource. So let's say, for example, it was a database. We might have the database full control group. We might have the database write group, the database read group. We would then take the global group from Active Directory and add it to the local group, which is on the server where the data resides. Then we take the local group that's on the server and add it to the access control list to the server where the resource is. So that way we have kind of what's called the mantra of group nesting. Users go into global groups, global groups go into local groups, and local groups go on the resource access control list. Well, once we had Active Directory involved, we had a new type of group in Active Directory called a domain local group. Microsoft's idea was to take the local groups and replace them with domain local groups. But this became a huge problem because most organizations already had the local groups and to redesign an entire organization of local groups into domain local groups would be very difficult. If you have the opportunity to use domain local groups instead of local groups, I recommend it because they're a little bit more flexible, they're a little bit easier. Also, the global groups and the domain local groups now reside in Active Directory, so now we can see who has memberships in the groups much easier, all through Active Directory users and computers or some other third-party tool. Now, some important things about groups that we do not want. 
We do not want to place users directly into local groups on servers. Now what I'm talking about here is the domain users, not the local users. We don't want to place domain users into local groups directly because it's very hard to manage them. We really don't have a report that we can run to see which groups a user belongs to. We also do not want to put users directly on the access control list. Again, this is very difficult to manage. In my opinion, it's impossible to manage when you put a user directly on an access control list. So ideally, users go into global groups, global groups go into domain local groups or local groups, and then the domain local groups or the local groups go on the access control list. This is the best way to organize and manage your groups with an Active Directory. This has been Derek Melber. Thanks for watching.